Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. In this video, we're going to be looking at what is a transitive set. Now, we learned that being a member of a set does not necessarily make you a subset of that set. But sometimes the members of a set are all subsets of that set. When this happens, we call that set or class transitive. Some call it complete, not transitive. We're going to use transitive, but just be aware that you may see complete instead in the literature. Now, this can apply to sets or classes. A set can be transitive, a class can be transitive, all across the board. So, let's look at some examples to help us really get a handle on this. So, I want you to take a look at all of these sets. They're all explicitly defined. And see if you can guess which ones are transitive and which ones are not transitive. Remember, transitive is a set such that all of the elements of the set are also subsets of the set. Let's take a look at A. A, we're going to say, is transitive. Why? Well, B, C, and D, for it to be transitive, B, C, and D all have to be subsets of A. Well, let's look at what B, C, and D are defined as. B is defined as C, the set of C and D. Well, C and D are both members of A, so B is a subset of A. C is defined as the set of B and D. Well, B and D are both members of A, so C is also a subset of A. D is defined as B and C. B and C are both members of A, so D is a subset of A. So B, C, and D are all members of A and subsets of A. So A is transitive. But what about these others? Well, let's look at B. B has, as its elements, C and D. C is not a subset of B because it includes B, and B doesn't have itself as a member. So B is not going to be transitive. Now C has as its members B and D. Let's look. B has as members C and D. That's not a subset of C because C isn't a member of itself. So C is also not transitive. And for the same reason, D won't be transitive either because both B and C, the members of D, contain D. So they can't be subsets of D because D doesn't contain itself. So D isn't transitive either. All right, let's look at the second half. So E is the set of F, G, H, and I. Let's see if all of those are also subsets of E. Well, F is the set of F and G. So both F and G are present in E, so it's fine. G is the set of just F. Nope, that doesn't mean that G and F are equivalent. It means that G is the set of F. Check out our video, X versus the set of X, if you're curious why. H, but because F is both a member of G and a member of E, all of the members of G are members of E, so G is a subset of E. So both F and G so far are subsets of E. What about H? H's members are F, G, and H. So H is a subset of E. It's also a member of E. So far, so good. But what about I? I has as its members B, C, D, G, and F. B is not a member of E. So I is not a subset of E. It couldn't even be a subset. It has too many members. It has five members. E only has four. There's no way all of those five members, if they're unique, could be found in E. So E must be not transitive. All right. What about F? F has as its members F itself and G. Well, all sets are subsets of themselves. So F is a subset of F. So that one passes muster. What about G? Well, G has as its only member F. And F is a member of F. So F is transitive. What about G? G has as its only member F. Is F a subset of G? Well, no, because F includes G, but G doesn't include itself. So G is not transitive. What about H? H has as its members F, G, and H. 
Well, f is a subset of h because f is just f and g. g is a subset of h because g is just f and f is a member of h. And h is a subset of h because all sets are subsets of themselves. So h will be transitive. What about i? Let's take a look. So b is a subset of i because b contains c and d. C is also a subset of I, because C only contains B and D, and so does I. D, similarly, is a subset of I, containing B and C. G is a subset of I, because G contains F, and so does I. And F is a subset of I, because F contains F and G, and so does I. Meaning that because all of the members of I are also subsets of I, I is transitive. Whew! Hopefully that all made sense. With all this in mind, let's look at the official definition of transitivity. A class A is transitive if and only if for all X and all Y. If X is a member of Y and Y is a member of A, then X is a member of A. Or if T were to stand for transitive for all A, A is transitive is identical to for all X and all Y, X is a member of Y and Y is a member of A implies that X is a member of A. So if X is a member of Y and Y is a member of A for all the A and X, then X must be a member of A. So all the members of your members must be members of you. If that's true, then you're transitive. Up next, what is a swelled set? Which is kind of the other side, the flip side of the transitive coin. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and watch a new video on set theory every single day for the whole month of October. Stay skeptical, everybody.